Hello, and welcome to another SED Talk. I'm Dr. Cedric Wood, and I would like to talk again about the shooting in South Texas in Uvalde. That's how it's pronounced, Uvalde. What a tragedy. I listened over the weekend to the radio, the talk shows, and of course I've watched all the TV interviews. And so I've mulled this over while I was with my family down in Round Rock. And I think I've come up with a definitive answer to preventing future school shootings, mall and store shootings. Okay? I listen to these interviews and they all make statements and they ask questions. They make statements like, this has got to stop. Or we have to control the guns. Or President Biden said, I will do something about it. There will be changes. Okay. Questions are asked. Why would this young man do this? Or why would they not go on into the school? Or where does this mindset come from? Those are good questions. And I have the answer because the last question is, what do we do to prevent these shootings? Let's look at what's been done before, since Columbine. There has been focusing on gun control, and a whole large portion of the country is against it. So let's not get into that debate. There's talk about hardening schools and locking back doors and uh, metal detectors and uh, red flag laws, and that's all fine. But we're missing the ultimate point of what's going on and what to do about these shootings. What is going on is that these young men are full of pain and angry angst, which drives them to be homicidal out of their aggressiveness uh, comes these shootings. That's what's going on. There's not much more you need to explain. Except the next question is, where does this internal rage come from? It almost always comes from how they interact with, or don't interact with, mom and dad. So that's the answer of what we should do about it. Now, it's easy for me to say, all parents should go get family therapy. But I have noticed that parents are rather sensitive about being encouraged to learn parenting skills and to do better parenting techniques. I even asked somebody over the weekend, would you read a parenting book? No. He said he wouldn't do that. So that's on us, the mental health professionals, to write a book so simple or entertaining, I don't know, that would encourage, inspire parents to read that, to learn some basics of healthy parenting. But let's just assume, because you know that's going to be true, that millions of parents across Texas are not going to read a parenting book or watch a parenting class online, such as the ARC videos. That stands for Adults Relating to Kids. It's a nonprofit. I'm on the board of, of advisors, and I strongly encourage all parents to watch the videos we have on uh, YouTube. Parents won't do it, so we have to encourage parents to do that. How do we do that? I could sit here and say, parents, you should do this, finish my video, put it on YouTube, and then what would happen? nothing. So my proposal is for the state governments to get involved. Pass a mandate that would create an office of family health. This is who people would call when they notice that this young man is very withdrawn or this young man is writing things on social media having to do with guns or killing or even racist comments, things like that. 
And so this office would start to peruse those. Not the police. They're busy with criminals, okay? And even CPS is not the answer. So they would make a call or, or go by the young man's house to say, Hi, we're from the Office of Family Health, and we got a report about your son, and we'd like to talk to you. And so the parents would sit down, and this person would say very calmly and with plenty of respect and sensitivity that your son is posting these things or threatening these things or writing on school pieces of paper, murder, suicide, like Peyton did in New York. And then they would get a take from the parents of what's going on there. Now that might make a lot of progress right there, especially if the son is called into the room and they talk together right then. But I would suggest that the officer is not empowered to actually do family therapy right then. What he or she is empowered to do is say, we would highly recommend that you set up 10 sessions with a family therapist for you to go with your son. Not a psychiatric evaluation, not an individual counseling session with a psychologist, but family therapy with your son. And if the parents say, okay, well, we didn't know this, or we'll, you know, here are some names, we'll, we'll call one of those people. But if they say, well, no, I, our son's fine, we don't need to do that, then the officer with the Office of Family Health would say, oh, I'm sorry, but I have been mandated by the state of Texas to say, if you don't go, there is a potential $3,000 fine, and eventually, if you pay it and you still don't go, there is the potential of you going to jail. I'm sorry. Now, I don't want anybody to go to jail. That's horrible. What a terrible thing to threaten. But what I'm trying to avoid is what happened in the fall. And four years ago in California with the Turpins, they had how many? 17 kids. And now they're in prison, I guess, for the rest of their lives. Mr. and Mrs. Turpin. I don't want that. That's horrible. But in the fall in Michigan, um, Ethan Crumley went into the high school and shot and killed four beautiful young people. What happened? Mr. and Mrs. Crumley got handcuffed and taken to jail, and they are sitting in jail to this day. They're trying to get their bond lowered so they can post bond and become free. Their pri private home life is destroyed. This, what is this, six months? I don't want that for them. So even if the family health officer kind of reminded, we're trying to save you from jail. We don't want you to go. So we are mandated to strongly suggest you set up family therapy appointments that you go with your son to so that you can work on your relationship. And ideally, the parents would say, well, okay. And what would happen is that that son would start feeling heard and his anger and his hurt and his rage would come way down because finally he's communicating with mom and dad. I heard that in the case of Salvador in Uvalde that his father hardly ever talked to him. In fact, his sister uh, has stopped talking to his father because of the father's neglect and lack of willingness to talk to his son and daughter. There it is. I don't even have to talk about the mother that I've heard. Allegedly, she's been using drugs, and I'm sure they had lots of conflict because it wasn't that long ago that he moved out of being with mom into his grandparents' house. I mean, there it is. That's family conflict to a boy who does not have you know, brothers to soften the blow of all this. So it was a situation that was so perfect for family 
therapy. Why didn't they go? So, since families are so unknowing, lacking in information about family therapy, I would like the state of Texas and all the states to help them come to understand how important family therapy is with the procedure I just laid out. Let's prevent future shootings. And I'm not even talking about all the tens of thousands of young men that take guns to deep ellum and to the party and then end up shooting and killing somebody. I'm not even referring to that, but that can also apply because those young men are also showing a tendency towards violence. It would be They would be reported to the Office of Family Health and those parents would be encouraged. It's unbelievable what parents are doing. So the good parents that not, you know, need to shoulder some of the responsibility by being willing and open-minded about following this process of, <clears throat> of getting family therapy. Now, some parents would say, well, my son is not homicidal. He has no guns. That's, that's not going to happen to us. Well, well, okay, then they might be right. But there's five levels of parent-child growth. The fourth level is suicidal thoughts and suicide. I have a couple coming to see me. Their son got angry, drove his car, killed himself. Horrible. So I would say to parents, well, don't you want to make sure your son is not suicidal? And they might say, well, he's so full of life and he's so, he's not wanting to kill himself. He hasn't said a thing to me. Well, that doesn't mean anything. And then you would say, well, how about number three? There's so many millions of kids that are just depressed, just sad, and they're feeling alienated at school, and they're feeling anxious feelings. Don't you want to help them with that? Ideally, they'd say, well, okay, I'll go see family therapy and get family therapy to help them with that. But if they say, no, my kids are happy, they're not depressed, well, okay, we go to number two. Number two is low self-esteem. So many kids that appear to be happy and functional are still walking around with poor sense of self, a low feeling about how good they are or good looking they are or how smart they are or how acceptable they are, just low self-esteem. So come on, mom and dad, don't you want to help them with that? Ideally, they would say, yes, we'll go to help them with that. But even if they say, no, my child has good self-esteem, then the final area of improvement would be saying, even if your child scores, scores a, a six or a seven on self-esteem, there's always moving to an eight and a nine and a 10. How about going to see a family therapist and helping your child move to the top of freedom of suicidal thoughts and depression and move to the top of healthy self-esteem and an excited eye towards the future of growing and learning and growing up happy. Don't you want to help them with that? I can't imagine a parent saying, no, I don't want to help them have higher self-esteem. Please, mom, please, dad, your kids need help. And even if you just don't think they need help, we, I really want to encourage mass responsibility. The way to stop the school shootings is for all parents to say, okay, I'll do what I wanted Salvador's mom and dad to do. Even though I don't think my son is like that, I, you never know. The Crumleys did not know. Peyton G's parents did not know he was getting ready to do that. They should have gone to family therapy with Peyton in New York. So that's my answer. I hope you like it, and I hope you will write your senators and your representatives to encourage them them to pass the bill that mandates an office of family health that fields these questions, looks for kids that are in trouble, and then mandates family therapy. Thank you for tuning in. Let's work together to make this happen and keep America safe. Thank you. I'm Dr. Cedric Wood. Write me, call me. Let's talk.